You guys enjoying your day so far? Hallelujah. Good morning, New Covenant. Let's everybody say good morning to the North Campus. One church, two locations. Praise God. Happy Labor Day. Labor Day, the day we quit working. Amen? So, uh, you know, this is Labor Day weekend. A lot of people out traveling, but it's just a great day. How many of how many are you thankful for a job? Can you just thank God for your job right now? You know, labor, are you really saying it? Absolutely. Thank God. The Bible says God uh, gives us the ability to get wealth through skills, and he gives us opportunities and energy and motivation. And, you know, I'm talking to somebody who goes, yeah, I don't like my job. Can I just say you're probably not going to get a better job if you aren't thankful for the job you have. Amen? And on that note, we like to, uh, we've been studying and preaching a lot uh, through Winning at Work. It's an outreach we started, and we, we're firing it back up in the fall. And this, this fall, we're going we're gonna to go to Saturday mornings, fourth Saturday of this month. Think about it. Mark your calendar, Golden Corral. So we're not talking, you know, uh, fruit here. We're not talking yogurt. We're talking serious breakfast here. And at 9 a.m., and I'll be sharing a little bit more. I'm Pastor Chuck Warnick, by the way, uh, our founding pastor. And, and, and I'll be sharing a little bit more of the, of the vision of what that looks like. I'm really excited about the marriage of commerce and work and the Christian roots of our modern economic system. People don't even realize it. And when you see it and see what the Bible says about work, you get really, really fired up. So before the message, I wanted to announce that. I also wanted to announce that uh, we are... Uh, a lot of people have been asking about our Israel tour. Uh, we have a date put in place. We have tentative costs. We can't register yet, but you can go online to our front web, our, our main website, and then you can click over, and it'll give you some details on the tour. A lot of people, when is it? I want to mark my calendar. It's June 8th. June 8th, we're going to do a six- and an eight-day version, and we're finalizing. The problem is airfares. We're finalizing. We think it's about $3,500. We're trying to get it as low as we can, but we want it to be a great experience for everybody. So if, if you're wanting to go with us next year to Israel, put that on your calendar. If you can, guys, there's nothing like there's nothing like being where Jesus was. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know how else to tell you this. It, it's a 3D experience. It will really, really deepen your faith. So I really hope and pray that, that a lot of you can come this next uh, spring. So, uh, uh, and by the way, we saw, you saw the announcement on the life group. So this is why we're wearing our colors. We encourage you. We're going to kick that off this fall. Uh, I believe it's September 22nd is when we're going to kick it off. And if you've never led a group, think about it. We will have training. It's a one-day training. You can get trained today at the, at, at the beginning of our second service. You can go down to the building in the back, our educational building, and you can get trained today if you're a member of New Covenant. So I'm excited about our speaker today. Uh, you may have noticed an extra person on the platform, uh, Miss Laura. Let's stand up. Laura Cole. Come on, stand up, Laura. She's gifted, gifted worship leader. So Nathan and Laura Cole are with us today, and I came. Uh, they, they, Nathan has, used to be here many years ago, and he went down 15 years ago and planted a church in Leon, Mexico. And, you know, he obeyed God. He went down there. God gave him a beautiful Mexican wife, Laura, and they have two beautiful children, and they're in this dynamic city of Leon, Mexico, of over 2 million people. And there's so many opportunities there, and they're just a dynamic couple. And I, I was asked to, to be the speaker last night at their missions conference, Calvary Commission in Lindale. And so I, I spoke last night, and I was with them uh, in August, and we're going to go back in November, and we're going to uh, we're going to team with Global Advance, that a ministry we support. And one of the things Global Advance does is marketplace ministry, and uh, we're going to put a little marketplace one day marketplace seminar. I and and some other Global Advance team members are going to go down there one other at least this time, and we're going to do a big one next year. So I was down there in August, and I met with some of his business leaders, and they're really pumped, and they're, they're, they're going to see how Jesus can integrate and use them in their workplace, and they're inviting people from their companies to come, so be praying about that. That's November, and you may want to go with us. I think it's the first uh, weekend in November we decided that was going to be uh, the weekend we were going to do it. So, so we're launching that and, and I knew they were coming up for this conference, and I just felt like, you know what? I bet our church would really be blessed to hear from Pastor Nathan Cole. So let's welcome Pastor Nathan Cole from Leon, Mexico. 
Thank you, Pastor Chef. Love you. Amen. It's a blessing to be here. We are so privileged to be worshiping with our church family, our church home. As Pastor Chuck said, uh, we've been down there uh, going on 15 years. In January, our church will celebrate the 14th year anniversary. And our church is a marriage of, of amen. Thank you, amen. Our church, uh, as I say, our church is a marriage of Pastor Chuck Warnock and New Covenant Church leadership influence in our lives and the mission school where I graduated down the street, Calvary Commission, we have kind of married those two things together and dynamic things are taking place and about to take place in Leon. I just wanna say thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers all these years. If, if you don't re uh, remember me, well, I was here years ago, but uh, God is doing great things in Leon. We're still there. Sometimes people come up to say, hey, what are you doing? Are you still in Mexico? Yep, we're still in Mexico. We're still plugging away, and like Pastor Chuck told me years ago, we're going to be there until we see what God wants to do. Amen? We know what God wants to do. He's given us a clear vision, and we're going to stay there until we see it happen. Amen? Amen? Well, we're here excited to be with you this morning. Uh, also greet those that are, that are watching online, and also I want to greet those of our church that are watching online. Bienvenidos, hermanos. Que bueno que están aquí. Blessings. Welcome to everyone. If I get tripped up a little bit with my English, just... Uh, aguantame tantito. Just, uh, just ha have a moment for me, would you please? Because I don't preach very much in English anymore. I was going through my notes, and I'm translating things back to English for my sermon this morning. So, so bear with me, but I believe God has given us a word this morning. Amen? Well, we're celebrating Labor Day, and so I was, as I was meditating on, on what to share this morning, if you're taking notes, I want to talk about how God works. Is that Okay. Labor Day, how God's works, we're kind of uh, in this Labor Day weekend. Uh, and each one of these points, I know and I realize that they could be a message, a whole series in itself. So I want to get to the core of the message, which is towards the end. So the first couple points, I'm going to mention them, and I encourage you to study it out, read it on your own. But how does God work? The first thought that I had... And I was talking about, I was thinking about working, and, and, and I saw the scripture teaches us that God works through our actual work. Amen? Uh, Pastor Chuck mentioned uh, that we're going to do the ministry in the workplace, Misiones en el Mercado is what we're calling it in, in Mexico, and we're excited. Uh, Leon is a prosperous city, uh, 2.1 million people, only about 2% Christianity, and over the last five years, there has been a, uh, the last statistic that I, that I saw, there's around 63 Japanese companies that have moved into Leon over the last five years. Leon is principally uh, a factory, uh, um, leather. We, we produce leather. Anything you want, leather, shoes, belts, jackets, you get at a really good price. Hush puppy shoes, those kind of things. I don't know if you've heard of those. Caterpillar shoes, all that. They make those in Leon. Okay, and so it's leather products, but now automotive industry has come in tremendously. Over the past couple of years, there's been a growth, uh, they say about seven to now 10,000 Japanese and Orientals moving into our city because of the marketplace. So I'm really excited, I've been praying about that for years, about how we can connect with these people, and Pastor Chuck is our answer, and his friends, they're coming down, they're gonna walk with us in that vision of reaching these men and women in the marketplace, amen? So we see that God can work through our actual work, through our job, through our career. And the question that I had in my spirit was, why work? Why work? Why does God manifest himself through work? And, and maybe it's not so spiritual, but the first thought that I had was what Paul teaches in 1 Thessalonians 3.10. Why do we work? If anyone will not work, neither shall you eat. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I like to eat. My, my wife teases me sometimes, she goes, I, I think you just do exercise so you can eat more. <laughs> and yes, I, I do martial arts, I have, I'll just throw that in there, I do have a couple, three black belts, but I like to exercise, but I also like buffets, I like to go eat, and especially, thank you Lord, for the land of free refills. <laughs> okay? That's generosity. In Mexico, you go to places, it's like, man, it's really just one cup? I like iced tea. I like uh, Diet Coke. You know, it's like, I want to I wanna have a free refill. So when we come home, we always look for places that have free refills. And they're everywhere in the, in the United States. 
But on a more, on a more spiritual note, why do, we, why do we work? Because God created us to work. Genesis, uh, Genesis 2.15, excuse me. It says, the Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend it. Another translation says, to work it and to watch over it. So we could come to the conclusion that why do we work? Because God created us to produce. God created us to bear fruit. He is a creator. He called us to create. He called us to, pr- uh, to, to, to produce fruit. Excuse me. Uh, my Spanish words want to start coming out. He, to produce fruit. And our work, our career, I see it, and we've t- we teach this at our church, it's our first mission field. Well, our first mission field is our family, but the next mission field is the workplace. Do you agree with that? God has established us in specific places so that we can establish his kingdom in the workplace. So he works through our actual work. It's his kingdom in us, in the workplace. Number two, how else does God work? He works through his church. God has established this beautiful, wonderful thing that he calls his bride, that is his church, and he loves his church. He gave his life for his church, and he has called us to make disciples. Why do we come to church? Ask yourself that question this morning. Why are we here right now? Why do we uh, get connected to small groups? Why do we uh, connect and discover new covenant and different classes and and things that we, we do here at our church, and we also do it in our church? We know that we need a team. We know that we come to church to receive encouragement. It's a place to belong. It's a family. So I just want to encourage you, if you feel lonely today, you have come to the right place. If you feel like uh, the, the waves of life of, are washing over you and you feel like maybe I don't know what's next, I don't know, uh, I got struggles in my job, I have uh, maybe struggles in the marriage or in the family, things like that, you have come to the right place because the body of Christ, the church of God, is a place to find a team, a family. We use that word a lot in our church. We are connected to the family Amen. of Christ. But some people are surprised to understand that what the purpose of the church is. Paul teaches us that the local church is a place where we can learn how to do ministry. Now, there's many things that are taking place today, and some people can think that the the pastoral staff, the worship team, those that are serving in the church, that that is the ministry. I would challenge us this morning to consider the fact that yes, that is ministry, but that is just the beginning of ministry. Would you agree with that, pastors? That that is the beginning of ministry because uh, in Ephesians, Paul teaches us, chapter four, verses 11 and 12, that he himself, we're talking about Christ Jesus, the son of the living God, king of kings, Lord of lords, he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. We've heard this verse before, correct? If you haven't, then we can come to verse 12 and we find that here is one of the greatest reasons why I need, you need, all of us need to be connected to a local church. And can I just take a pause to say, if you do not have a local church, this for the last 17 years has been my home church. Even if I'm not here every week, we're watching online, we're connected. Everything that we do in our church is filtered through Pastor Paul, Pastor Mike, Pastor Chuck. Many dynamic things are happening in our church because of this church. This is our home church. If you don't have a home church, this is a wonderful place. Amen? Amen? Amen. I thought maybe there'd be a little bit more excitement about that. But he tells us why and where and why we come to church. Verse 12, for God gives us shepherds, pastors, leaders, for what? For the equipping of the saints, and here's the word, for the work of the ministry. I love what Pastor Chuck said a couple weeks ago. He's preaching at our church. He said, leadership is a contact sport. It is work. Like I said, I, I have studied martial arts for many, many years, and you, if you want to get a black belt, you've got to put in a lot of hours, a lot of work, and a lot of hits, and you shed some blood, you shed some sweat, but it's fun. Well, for me, it's fun. Some people say, well, maybe that's not too fun, but it is work, and we come to the church 
sometimes with the mindset that I'm going to sit and receive. I'm going to sit and be blessed. And yes, that does take place. But we should all come to a maturity, Paul later on, and says that we are growing in our faith, that we understand that the church is actually a place to become equipped, to find my tools, to find my, my gifts, to walk in what God has called me, his purpose for my life. Amen? Amen? And that is work, the work of the ministry. And can I say this? The pastors, uh, the leadership, they are doing work of the ministry, yes. But who does it say does the work of the ministry? What does it say? The saints do the work of the ministry. Because why? Because the pastors, we come, <clears throat> excuse me, to train and to equip because Jesus established it this way and we understand that we cannot meet all of the people that you know. Right. We cannot connect with every person that you can connect with. That's why God has equipped this amazing team. And I can just get a brag on what God has done in this church over the years because it has influenced us and our ministry so much that God has established this amazing team of men and women that we can entrust our hearts and our spirits to because they're established by God Amen. and they will equip us to walk in the purpose that God has designed us for. I don't have the scripture on the screen, but it says, in my mother's womb, he spoke, created, purpose, life, my calling before I was even born. Do you believe that? And that is why I come to church to find my purpose in his kingdom so that I may also be used to establish his kingdom in other places. Amen. And I would like to speak now just for a few moments on how he works. And when I say he, I mean God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We're in this beautiful time in our church right now over the last couple months where God has given us a vision for 2019 that's called Promises Fulfilled. And can I just say, have the liberty for this to say, right now in this moment, there's a promise fulfilled in my life. Because when I was here one time, it was about 2002, 2003, the Lord, I was sitting right around this area, worshiping, and the Lord told me, you will speak up there one day. And I'm speaking here now. Amen? Amen? Not by what I can do, but what he can do in me. Amen? Amen. How he works. And we have just seen this time. The, the Holy Spirit is, has been moving our worship team into to, to prophetic times of worship and just, just basking in his presence. And, and we're, having, we're just coming off a series right now in our church called The Promised One. And the Lord has just taken us to this intimate walk in our church and us as leadership, as pastors, just to remember who he is. So I would encourage us all this morning, let's just remember who he is and how does he work? How does he, uh, what are the workings of God in our lives? And like I said, each one of these points I know could be a whole message in itself, but I'm not going to preach a whole series in one day, but I just want to share with what God is doing in our church, in our hearts, in our lives with you this morning. So let's go with God the Father. What are the works or how does God the Father work. John 6, 28, 29. There's some people that they had the similar question for Jesus. You know, how does God work? Well, what does he do? How can we understand the workings of God in our lives? And I think Jesus says it pretty well. He's pretty, he's pretty awesome, isn't he? He just says it how it is, and he opens up men's intelligence and their minds, and he speaks the, the mysteries of God to our hearts. Isn't that beautiful? And Jesus says this, and they ask him, and then they said to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? And perhaps they saw Jesus doing miracles. Perhaps they, they, they saw him walking and, and doing all these amazing things and speaking these amazing teachings. And, and I want to believe that they were wanting to understand how can I do the same? And it's amazing what Jesus says. And Jesus answered them, verse 29, Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God. Jesus doesn't go, or go around the bush. He goes right to the answer and he says, this is the work of God. He's speaking about his father, that you believe in him whom he sent. Amen? Amen. The work of God upon the earth is that we would have faith. Yes. 
is that we would have faith in the person that God has sent. And if you've been in church for any amount of time, if you've been in this church for any amount of time, you'll know the one that God sent is Jesus, the son of the living God. But it requires faith. We must believe. We must believe that it was Jesus that came as God's son, and he sacrificed himself for us, and he died for our sins. It is by faith. Why by faith? Because it says in the scripture that without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible. That's a strong word. It is impossible to please God. So God sent his son that we would believe upon his name, believe in him, Jesus Christ, the son. So if we are to understand the works of God, And to understand the works of God is by the person of Jesus. So then I ask myself, well, what is the works of the one that he sent? Amen? What are the works of Jesus? And many of us probably know this, but if you're visiting for the first time or or watching online, maybe you have the same question as I had many years ago. The scripture teaches us that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen? And if we study the Gospels, if we study the Scriptures, we understand that the first teaching, the first thing that Jesus said and did in his ministry was what? He preached repentance and that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. Because he understood and he understands that all men fall short to the glory of God. And God knew that we cannot come into his presence by works alone. So he sent his son to show us the way. Aren't you thankful for that? He sent his son to show us the way of how we can get to God. And now the Holy of Holies is open because of the son of the living God. And we have been saved and set free. Amen? Amen? The first working of Christ was salvation, salvation message and repentance. And then through that came the message of redemption. And redemption basically means, a simple definition is to restore what has been lost, clearing a debt. So the work of Christ in our lives, in your life, whether it was uh, two weeks ago, whether it was yesterday, whether it was 20 years ago, or even today, I need a new working of Jesus Christ right now. Amen? I need more of him in my life. I am not fully sanctified. Would you agree with that? My wife says amen. No. (laughs) I am not fully sanctified. I am redeemed. I have been, uh, I have redemption in my life because I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but this is a process of sanctification. So I need Jesus more today than I ever did before. Amen? And that is the continual work that he has in me, in us as the body of Christ. He frees us from sin. He frees us from religious mindsets. We can't do the things how we've always done them. Is that, did I say it right? I'm in Texas. Can't do it how we've always done it, right? We have to have a change. We have to have a renewing of our minds. We have to have a, have a change of the way that we behave, the way that we speak, the way that we think. Bec- not because he's an a, a evil God, but because he is a God of love and he wants to see his son reflected in our lives. Amen? Amen? He wants us to be truly free to love and to experience the life that he gives to us. He says that it's an abundant life. Amen? Amen? And finally, I want to share with you, and this is where I'm going to give the greater focus of my message this morning, is the working of the person of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know that we need him? And sadly, there is not a great, in our church there is, yes, but sadly today in in the church, the body of Christ, we don't give, I believe, this is my opinion, we don't give the emphasis on the person of the Holy Spirit that we should. Many people, many, many people say, well, well, what does he do? Why is he here? It's, he's a power. Or he's a, you know, people have these mystical ideas. In our church, we preach in Mexico, and I know in this church we preach it here. It's not a mystical experience. It is a real experience. Yes. He is the third person of God Almighty. He is God. He is fully God, and we need him in our lives. This is a time of grace, the scripture teaches us. To seek the Lord while he can be found. There will come a day where the Holy Spirit will not be present. And that causes the fear of the Lord in my heart. So I want to be as close to him as I possibly can. Amen? 
What is the work? What does he do? There are 12 ministries, and I'm going to speak one hour about each of them. No, I'm just joking. There are 12 ministries of the Holy Spirit, but I would like to focus on three main areas of his work or his ministry that we can see and experience even today in this moment. Does that excite you? Yeah. Amen. Number one, he brings us closer to God and closer to his son. Amen. John 16 7 to 9 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for, I'd, if, I, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, Jesus is now with his disciples and he's going to ascend to heaven. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And, he, and when he has come, check what he will do. This is his work. He will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Now, God gave us a conscience. You know, Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, so we do know right from wrong, but that conscience can be severed. That conscience can be severed if we continually do what we're not supposed to do. So the ministry, uh, one main ministry of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, is he is here in the earth to remind us, to stimulate our conscience, to bring our heart close to God and say, Nathan, I don't like that. Nathan, this is not what I designed you for. There are so many people around us. I don't know if it's like that in where you are, but where we are, there's so many people that, especially in Mexico, that are, that are connected to idolatry, physical idols, but especially in Leon because it's a very prosperous city, you know, money and, and work. Like I said, God created us to work, but we cannot replace that with the person of God, with the person of Christ. You know, people can, can put different things in, in front of God and, and the Holy Spirit has come to remind us this is what I desire for you. And now there's a difference between conviction and condemnation. The enemy comes with condemnation. There is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus our Lord. Condemnation says, well, you did it again. You, you're worthless. You can't make it. You're not good enough. Why don't you just give up? Just don't even go to that church anymore because they don't even probably want you there. How many of you heard that voice? I've heard it. Right? That's condemnation. But the conviction says... Get close to the pastors. Get close to your life group leader. Get close to someone. Talk to them about your problems. Open up your heart. Yeah, but what if they don't accept me the same? What if they won't love me the same? The Holy Spirit, don't worry. Don't worry. He gives us peace. You're in the workplace and you're going through struggles and, and, and I don't know what to do. And everybody has that one coworker that's just like, thank you, Lord, for this person in my life. Right? And you can't love them enough. You can't have enough patience for that person, right? That's why they are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Because he brings us closer to him. And he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness. And he, and that goes into our, my second point, he will purify us and justifies us before God. Amen. You can study 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. There's a list of of the sin nature of man that keeps us separated from God. But I love what he says in verse 11. Such were some of you. Yes. Amen? Yes. He's talking about this list of sins, all these things that you're separated from God, you can't get close to God. But now because of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, he brings us to him. And he says, such were some of you. Right. Amen? Yes. But you were washed. Hallelujah. But you were sanctified. Hallelujah. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, and check what it says, and by the Spirit of our God. He purifies us. He works in our life as a daily sanctification so that we can become more like Jesus. I don't know about you, but I want to be more like Jesus. I need to be more like Jesus every day. Amen? And I love the third part, number three the works of the Holy Spirit in our life. He renews us and empowers us to live a godly life. Amen. Sometimes we can feel pressured or stressed like we can't measure up. We can't hit the mark every single time but because God is holy and we can have this religious mindset of, oh, that's impossible. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can, I can, I don't know if I can live that way. Am I the only one that has felt like that before? 
But God, in his kindness, in his abundance, it says in Titus 3, 4 through 7, but when the kindness of the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, he's talking about Jesus, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. How many of you are thankful that he saved us? Amen? Amen. And check what he says. Through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Verse six, whom he poured out on us abundantly. Jesus Christ, our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. He has abundantly poured out his spirit on all flesh. Amen? He has abundantly poured out himself over all of us so that we could receive the work of God in our life. And in closing, as Pastor Chuck comes, I just would like to ask us this morning, have we experienced, have you experienced the work of God in your life? Perhaps you're, perhaps you're here and you say, Pastor, uh, I, I'm really excited about all this. The worship is amazing. Wow, you know. And, but what do I do now? What do I do now? The first step is put our faith and trust in Jesus. Amen? First step is to say, Lord, I've tried it my way and it didn't work out the greatest. I submit myself to you. I put my faith in you, Jesus and then we receive the work of God through Jesus and the Holy Spirit into our life. And he, and he redeems us and he renews us. He's purifying us every day. Amen? So, Lord, we just give this time to you. Give this time to you and we reflect on what you are speaking to us even now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 How many are thankful for the work of God in our life? Amen. You know, Paul the Apostle... One of the greatest people that ever lived, in my opinion, was the Apostle Paul. He was, he was a game changer, both in his generation and since then. He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. And he talked about how much God worked through him, but he said, it's no longer I, but God who works in me, God who lives in me. So I have no doubt that each one of us need to uh, see the hand of God work in our life. And, and I just ask you to let the Holy Spirit speak to you uh, about where that is. Amen. I mean, how many have received something today from that? Let's give let's give Pastor Nathan Cole a hand of appreciation. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm going to ask you to stand, if you would, and um, remind you that we do have Discover New Covenant today. If you are new to our church and you've never been there, it's our step one. What does it mean to be a member of our church? That's happening immediately after this service. Not immediately, but at, during our 11, 15 service. You can take a break, get some coffee, whatever. And then you just go in the back and just go down the hall uh, to my right, your left, and in our education building. We also, if you're considering being a life group leader, uh, we have a one-hour training session that happens at the same time down the same hall just before the Discover New Covenant Next Steps class. So, you know, if you've never led a group, lead a group. Get somebody to help you. But you got to get a little uh, orientation session, and that's that's happening today. And uh, think about leading a group or hosting a group. And if you're just not sure, go check out what does that look like, and we'll be glad to help you. I want to ask our prayer team to come and uh, let the Holy Spirit speak to you about what He is saying to you today. In fact, let, as, as they come, can we just pray one more time? And just say, Lord, what are you saying to me right now? Some of you are going through some things, maybe in your work life, maybe in your marriage. Maybe you've never really made Jesus the Lord of your life. So, Lord, just ask the Lord, would you bow your head with me? Just say, Lord, what are you saying to me in this message? No doubt the Holy Spirit pricked your heart during some of the points, that, some of the scriptures that came up on the screen. And, Lord, we just want to hear you today, each one of us. We want to hear what you're saying to us, Lord. We praise you, Father. Just ask him, say, Lord, he's saying to me today. Praise you, God. And Father, I pray in Jesus' name that every one of us will not only hear but obey your voice. And we'll have a wonderful next step in our life as a result. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day.